That's great. And now I have a picture of everyone online and I can look and see uh, the folks in the room, which is great. I picked up the wrong glasses this morning. So if you see me switching my glasses back and forth, just appreciate that I'm doing my best. <laughs> um, it's July 12th. We're just two weeks away from the uh, beginning of our annual intensive practice period. We call that ango. Ango means peaceful dwelling. And you know, it's an old system, old way of retreating. And that's what we're doing this morning. We decide whether you're at home or here, I'm gonna take an hour of my time and I'm going to retreat. I'm going to sit my own breath, my own body with others who have the same intention and then uh, listen to some words about the Dharma, about the teachings. Uh, and in this case, in our context, it's the Buddhist, Zen Buddhist tradition uh, that we practice. Uh, so even if you're not on retreat, still during this period of time in the next, uh, next month, uh, I would encourage you to add a little time to your meditation practice. Uh, and, and maybe choose something that you do, something not, not large and dramatic, but something small that you do, uh, that you can engage in a meditative way. Maybe it's washing your coffee cup. <laughs> uh, it's just one thing that you, you, instead of going away from what you're doing, go in to what you're doing and, and pay attention. Uh, it's also a good time to study, study text or study art, study music. But before a task you've avoided, you know, I have a series of tasks I typically avoid. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's time to roll up my sleeves and, and do that. So at the Zendo, we sit a little bit longer. Uh, we study our liturgy. Uh, and we go on retreat if we can. And during that time, we all take uh, some text, some study text, and uh, we all work on it together. Um, and it could be contemporary Dharma words from, from a contemporary teacher or old Zen classics. Um, and today I want to introduce the study text that we're going to be using for the next month. Um, the text uh, is available on our website. So if you just click on Summer Ango on the first page, you'll go to the Summer Ango page and it'll show the text. You can click on that and download it. Uh, it is uh, Dogen Zendi's uh, Beloved writing, Mountains and Rivers, Discourse of Sutra. And uh, the lovely translator, Kaz Tanahashi, who's a friend of the Zendo, uh, contributed this from his latest book. Uh, and so we are free to use it as we wish. So, Mountains and Rivers, Sutra. It's one of his most appreciated teachings. We've studied it before. And I thought it would be really useful to study now because uh, Kimu, our Shuso, uh, teaches and researches sustainable land use. That's his area of specialty. And so I thought it would be good for us to come back to how we are part of all that is existing, the mountains and rivers around us. So it starts off like this. Mountains and waters right now are the actualization of the ancient Buddha way. Wow. Each abiding in its phenomenal expression realizes completeness. 
Because mountains and waters have been active since before the empty aeon, they are alive at this moment. This is the, the clincher on this, in this paragraph. Because they have been the self since before form arose, they are emancipation, realization. Mountains and waters right now are the actualization of the ancient Buddha way, each abiding in its phenomenal expression realizes completeness. Because mountains and waters have been active since before the empty aeon, they are alive at this moment. Because they've been the self since before form arose, they are emancipation, realization. That's a lot. If you take it line by line, what does it mean by mountains and waters right now are the actualization of the ancient Buddha way? Consider, consider where you live. What mountain or river is near you? How might those mountains or that river remind you of the Buddha way, of how the awakening way emanates from everything, from all things. You know, here in, in New York City, the great Hudson River flows all around us, and the Atlantic Ocean protects our shores. And as for mountains, Great fountains are very far away. But nearby, we can see the Palisades, the steep cliffs on the edge of the Hudson River, which separate New Jersey and New York. You know, many years ago, I drove with Genjin Savage, uh, who was a a long time practitioner with us. Uh, and we drove along the Palisades, uh, headed up to a retreat. And Genjin was a naturalist, a composer, but he was also a naturalist and a great talker. And he just blew my mind with his description of how the Palisades that we're, we were driving on, how they were created. 250 million years ago. Palisades, 250 million years ago. Wave upon wave of molten lava erupted through sandstone, solidified, such as rocks that have turned into gravy and just pulled up through the earth and solidified when they reached the air and became the stone cliffs that we were driving over, what are called the Palisades today. So is that not the actualization of the Buddha way? just across the river. No matter where you live, in the desert or mountain, or valley or city or village, there is all around you the evidence of the flow of creation and destruction over long periods of time. And that's what Dolan is talking about. He writes, mountains and waters right now. So we're not talking about 300 million years ago. We're talking about right now. Are the actualization of the ancient Buddha way. Each abiding in its phenomenal expression realizes completeness. There's nothing left out. Everything is present. 
Because mountains and waters have been active since before the empty aeon, they are alive at this moment. Because they've been the self since before form arose, they are emancipation, realization. They are the way to realize ourselves, our own individual selves. That's what he's saying. Think about where you are right now. Is it part of a great valley formed years and years ago? Or is it a peninsula that's rising out of the ocean? Or on a peak? newly risen from the earth. All of them are alive. All of what we call nature, geology, is alive. And so what does that have to do with you actualizing the ancient Buddha way? Yogan says, abiding in its phenomenal expression, it realizes completeness. So we might say about ourselves, by abiding in our phenomenal expression, we realize completeness. So what would that be like to abide in your phenomenal expression? I think of a 20th century wise man, Ram Das, who said, be here now. It's not complicated. It's not filled with a lot of uh, polysyllabic words. But it is saying the same as Dogen is saying. Here, now, 21st century. your Buddha nature, rather than thinking that someday you will be clear and act from within your true nature, consider your Buddha body today, now. It's just what Dogen is saying in the first lines of the sutra, of this chapter. Because mountains and waters have been active since before the empty aeon, they are alive at this moment. Because they have been the self since before form arose, they are emancipation realization. What does he mean because they have been the self before form arose? true of the mountains, and it's true of you. It's true of me. The element within each of us, which is part of the whole, part of the earth, part of the heavens, part of that which Dogen calls what was here before form arose, Wow, think of that. Before there was any form at all. All that came before and then after, there's you and I. Both are the realization of our own freedom, our being in the world right now. Here we are. And that's the key to our freedom. That's the key to our realization of our participation in the wholeness, in the vast fullness of life and history and all that we can imagine. It's an enormous vision that Dogen offers us 
and within it we can each one of us find our own unique way our own intimate path to completeness to the fullness of our own life and to what Dogen is offering us if we can really listen to his words the realization of the value and the meaning of our own life, your life. When we are able to see mountains as the subjects of awakening rather than the objects. Oh, that mountain woke me up. Instead, seeing the mountain as the subjects of awareness, then we can see all things everything as an opportunity to wake up we can see how we serve to wake others imagine what that would be like to allow our, our own selves to encounter the intimate reality of life allow ourselves to wake up so that each moment of our life is a moment of waking up oops i forgot oh i'll wake up she's really upset with me oh i think i'll wake up that was a mistake My candidate lost. Wake up. Too much poverty, too much suffering. Wake up. What a beautiful sunset. Wake up. That is so kind. Wake up. How would that change your idea of what it takes to wake up? Quiet sitting, Zazen lays the ground. It stops us from our constant blah, 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 blah. And our Sangha, our community relations, provides a few food for us. Uh, our dedication to service animates our spirit. Finally, though, it is the moment by moment realization that nothing is left out, that all of it matters, all of it matters, that will be the fuel for your insight and your recognition of who you truly are, who you truly are. Recognizing your participation in the wholeness of life. The last line of his section reads, because they have been the self since before form arose, they are emancipation realization. What's he saying? Because they have been the self since before form arose, they are emancipation realization. It's just a moment of time in your life and you recognize your identity with all that is being the self before form arises, your identity with everything. You realize your own freedom. That's what you see. You realize your own freedom. So I just urge you all to recognize that everything you do, every breath you take, every step you take, is a door to realizing your freedom. 
your appreciation for life just as it is today. And because you're not separate from everything that is, hear that? That was a wake up call. Because you're not separate from everything that is, you are a door to allowing others to realize the freedom of all of life. You can do this. You can use whatever arises, whether it's a weird sound from outside, a breath of air, a simple thought. It's all there, ready to serve others. So let me close with a, a verse. Be your own mountain. Sip like a mountain. Care and serve like a mountain. And let the clouds and sky and sun and moon delight your heart and show you the way.